I'm sure we all like privacy. And the thing about iOS 18 is Apple gave us a lot of amazing privacy tools. And so on today's video, if you just picked up a brand new iPhone 16 or you just upgraded from iOS 17 to 18, here's all the privacy settings that you need to adjust that are disabled by default. Let's begin with Wi-Fi privacy settings. By launching settings and going into your Wi-Fi section, and hit the little eye icon on your Wi-Fi connection that you are currently connected to. In the bottom right here where it says privacy Wi-Fi address, where it says fixed, go in here, enabled rotating. This will help in making your phone being less prone to personally target ads and will prevent those ads from following you from one app to the other. Mine was set to fix, which means it's easier for these advertisers to track me, but now I selected rotating. It's more hard and complex for them now. But if we go back here, on the bottom right here where it says limit IP address tracking, go ahead and enable this because if you read the description, limit IP address tracking will hide your IP address from known trackers in Mails or Safari. More amazing tools that we finally received to prevent advertisers from not just stealing our information, but also making a profit off your daily tasks when you're just casually operating your smartphone. Now from here, next thing I want to show you is the new privacy and security features, which we located in the Face ID and Passcode section. Just tap on privacy and security and go into your contacts. If you look closely, now we have the ability to limit access to some third party apps. Before, like on Instagram, for example, it was full access or none. Now you can limit access and you can select the individual contacts individually if you want your friends to find you on certain platforms or select none at all. So now Apple gave us the ability to finally have more control on what app should have full access or limited access in terms of our contact lists because if you scroll down and just look at all these third party apps that request for this information. So definitely spend the time here in selecting the people you want them to find in certain platforms or the ones that you just don't want them to have access to anything at all. Now, another thing you could do in the privacy and security section is if we scroll down and go into the Apple advertising, click on here, disable personalized ads as well. By turning this off, personalized ads will limit Apple ability to show you ads basically. So since we already blocked third parties, why not block Apple as well? This way we can actually enjoy our product without being bombarded with certain ads that will just follow us from app to app. Now, if you ever subscribe to something, it, I know we already are familiar by tapping on your profile picture on top in the settings and go into the subscription tab. Here not only is a quick method to monitor your subscription, but now when you click on a subscription, now you have the ability to view other plans and quickly switch from one subscription option to the other instead of canceling and going on that third party app and selecting the subscription you want to change to. Now you can actually change, have more options right here in your subscription. To show you a better example, here's Instagram for example. You can now select all plans and quickly switch between the different plan options that they have available instead of canceling that subscription or launching the app just to change from one subscription to the other. Now, if you're anything like me, sometimes you're listening to like music with Apple CarPlay or you're just playing music, but something happens. You see, if you launch the music app as a fine example, we hit, let's just play Swedish Mafia, have that on low. Just gonna erase it slightly. Hopefully my voice doesn't cause it to be copyright. But if we go on camera and you hit record, our music is still playing in the background, it's not paused. So it doesn't cause any interference whatsoever. Also, if you may have noticed a new tool that was added is the ability to pause recording and continue recording without making a new clip. I thought that was kind of cool. But this works with CarPlay. I love it because whenever something's happening, my music doesn't just pause and make everything awkward. It'll just resume recording. If it's not working on you, you'll have to go on your iPhone settings and go into camera and then click on the recording and sound. On the very bottom where it says allow audio playback, make sure that's enabled and now you have the ability to record while media is playing in the background. Notice how I say media because it also works with podcasts as well as videos you're watching like on Hulu or even YouTube. Now another thing to also be aware of is in the battery tab right here. You see Apple gave us a new powerful tool. If you go down and click on the charging tab, you now have the slider ability to go from 100% charge or 80 or in the middle or 95 as an example. Because just like a, like a modern day electric vehicle, it's not recommended to have your device at 100% if it's not doing anything. Now you can actually give your battery a 20% buffer 
to maximize the longevity of the internal battery of your iPhone. This way, if you like to keep your phone for longer than three years, I recommend leaving it like around 90 to 80% to maximize the longevity of your iPhone so the internal battery doesn't degrade and you lose battery health. So you can set your limit at 90% and you'll have like a 10% buffer so your iPhone battery doesn't, doesn't lose its battery health quickly. But notice the optimized battery is disabled because when you go below 100%, it doesn't work. But if you like optimization, you can set the limit to 100% and you'll see you have the ability to enable or disable battery optimization, which is another great tool to maximize your battery longevity. But my understanding, it's best to do 90% or 80%, never 100% if you care about your battery life. And then of course you have the ability to make your phone charge efficiently during clean energy, which is optional. I have a solar system in my household, so I'm always charging with clean energy. Plus, it's just a battery. It's not like an electric car, so I really don't see value in this. But now, since we could turn off battery optimization, you can now disable precision tracking. Here, I'll show you more on what that means. If we go back to their setting page, and we scroll down to privacy and security, and then tap on location services, and look for system services all the way at the very bottom. Click on here. And where it says significant location, where it says turn on, it will require Face ID to get access to it. But in this page, basically this will keep a record of all your places you've been throughout the years. And will make notes and keep a track on this habit. You could either decide to clear all, or in our case, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And by turning this off, you know whenever you get in your car for car play, and you notice the map app is suggesting like, hey, you typically have a habit of going here to like a gym or something like that. Would you like to go right now? Sometimes it's awkward whenever a guest or somebody's inside my car and they see the map suggesting already. And they may ask, what are you doing there? Or why are we going there? And just confuse everybody. By having this off, this will eliminate Siri dashboard suggestion on CarPlay, but also on your iPhone to stop setting suggested routes. So thanks to the capability to turn off battery optimization, we now have the freedom to actually turn this off without sacrificing battery life. It's really interesting how this works, but turn that off if you can relate. And of course you clear your record as I previously stated. Now back in this page, I wanna show you another thing. In accessibility, and go down so you find the Siri tab right here, and where it says, require Siri for interruptions, Enable this. This is a new feature that Apple gave us, which allows you to interrupt Siri. Because I don't know about you, but there's been times where I'm like constantly telling Siri to stop listening or shut up when I request for like a certain address or a certain request and Siri gets it wrong entirely. Siri is smart enough to know that you're talking over it and will then start listening, but it's a hit or miss at times. But by enabling interrupt Siri, you could just say Siri after it's responding to you and Siri will then start listening again to your command and you could correct Siri easily. This is an amazing feature. I used it quite a bit already, but by default, this was turned off. That's why I recommend others turn this on because it's just so useful whenever Siri responds back and it's incorrect, just say Siri and then say the command again, clarifying even more to hopefully get Siri to give you the correct answer. That's why it's best to have this on. Now the password app was a new given feature or a new app, I should say, that you can monitor all your existing passwords right here, making like third party NordPass or other subscription obsolete now. Because here you can create groups to share passwords with friends and family. Like right now I'm sharing my TikTok account with my partner as an example. And we, you could create different groups for like work purposes, of course, as well. You could do that. And then in Wi-Fi, of course, by clicking here, selecting a Wi-Fi name, you can share the QR code so an Android user could quickly just scan this and they'll connect to the internet without you having to actually give them your password. That's quite awesome. But something that's non well known is the password app has some impressive settings. You can locate it in the settings section. Let's get out of here real quick. In the home page, go down into the app section and look for the password app. So here it is. Click on it. And down here, make sure you have these three safety features enabled. The detection of compromised passwords, if it detects there's a breach at a certain website you had a password with, it will notify you. But then also here where it suggests strong password, definitely enable that. And also make sure you have allow automatic passkey upgrades. In case you change your password, this will automatically do it. These three are crucial. But down here where it says view autofill settings, click on this, it will take you to this new tab. And you can enable passkey to work on even third party apps. This way the password app will work even on third-party non-Apple apps as well. 
But right here where it says verification codes, delete after use, delete this to keep your device safe. This way you're not left with a bunch of verification codes in your messages. This way it will automatically be clean once you use the password. So definitely a few things right there in the password app you definitely want to enable. And then if you're a user who uses the Apple TV a lot, if you go into accessibility and go into audio and visual, it should look like this, blue with a little speaker and an eyeball. In here, just enable voice isolation. And on supported apps, when you're watching a movie, you can now increase voice isolation to reduce any background noise so you can actually hear your movies or TV shows with all the explosions or background music and stuff like that kind of dimmed down using machine learning. Right now, this only works on Apple TV. So if we launch the Apple TV and we tap on a show as an example, I'm going to select this one, Masters of the Air. Let me know if this is a good series. I just started watching it. But by selecting this little tool down here and tap on audio, we now have this new enhanced dialogue where you can isolate everything. And this will allow you to actually hear and hear everybody's vocal much cleaner and crisp. It's a great powerful tool for those that just wanted to hear what's going on vocally and you're just trying to limit distractions. I think that was really cool. This was originally only available on the Apple TV, but by doing this, you can now enable it on the iPhone as well. Now a tool that was given to us on FaceTime, because now when you're FaceTiming, right now I'm FaceTiming myself with an iPad, you can tap the share icon, right? You can actually share your entire screen. A three second countdown will start, and then the other device will be able to control your iPhone from here. Because on the top corner of the device that's share screen sharing with you, you can request to get control, right? and then continue, accept, let it connect, and now my iPad has full remote control of the iPhone that's sh being shared right now. But your notifications will still appear. If you wanna hide some of your privacy, there's a setting you could disable. If we leave this call right now, if you quickly go into your settings and go into notifications, look for screen sharing, and make sure you have allow notifications disabled. So now when you're screen sharing, your notifications, it won't pop up there and you don't have to have your mode selected or anything like that, just do this by default. Then, if you have a babysitter or somebody who's constantly going into your house and you have a smart deadbolt that's compatible with HomeKit, by launching the Home app, and you tap the plus icon over here, in the Add People section, there's now a new guest access, where you tap here, invite them with their contact information, and once you do that, you'll see a screen where you can set an actual schedule and the device they have access to. So if it's like a babysitter that's coming in between 1 through 5, they'll have deadbolt access, access to your house until that time period. And then once they leave, they lose access. That's a cool little tool right there. Another cool feature can be located in Safari, where if we go to something like 9 to 5 Mac, as an example, and you click on like an article, if you tap these little dot icons on the bottom over here, you now have a new hide distraction ability. Here you could use this to like hide ads or any column. So like this ad as an example, that's how I could benefit off of this. It's not ad blocker because you have to manually do this. But if you're trying to share something with like a friend or a family member and you're just trying to hide, I didn't mean to do that. There you go. And you're trying to hide like any distractions, just do this. And then you can take a screenshot once you're done to give you like a cleaner layout. In addition to that, if you go into your settings, there also is another Safari tool you need to manually enable. In here, go into the app section and go ahead and look for Safari right here. And on the very bottom where it says highlights, turn this on. By having this on, now whenever you click on an article and you hit this little dot, it will summarize everything automatically for you. And yes, if you notice, if you live in California, your state driver issued ID can now be used in the Apple Wallet. I set this up recently, so just launch the Wallet app, tap the plus icon right here. And then select driver's license. And then California is now available to be selected. It looks like it's going to take a day or two to be approved though from the DMV because it's still in the verification process. And then if you own a pair of AirPods, I already covered this in the other video, but in case you missed it, if you have AirPods second generations, doesn't matter if it's USB-C or Lightning, we got given new settings as well. So on the main page of our settings, you know, click on your AirPods to connect, scroll down, and then click on adapted audio. Now you have the ability to adjust adapted audio if you want more noise reduction or less noise reduction or leave it by default. So if you use the awareness feature right here, 
adaptive audio control. That's what you're basically adjusting right here. More freedom to us to customize it. Then in addition to that, if you go down and you see head gestures, this is where you can enable head gesture to nod your head for a yes or a no. Whenever Siri is requesting, would you like to answer? You nod your head no or a yes to pick up the call. There's also a try gesture right here. By clicking on here, you'll be able to preview it before you actually start using it so you have a general understanding how to use it in the real world when the opportunity does come. But now putting that aside, if you may have noticed, my keyboard has English and Spanish, as now you can actually add multiple languages in your keyboard. You'll be able to do this in the settings and click on general and go into keyboard right here and click on the language you have selected right now for your keyboard. So in our case, we just have English. By clicking on here, on the bottom here where it says add language, you have all these different languages to choose from. So in our case, I'm just gonna pick Spanish, keyboard layout preference, but by default, it's good enough. But now whenever you launch a keyboard app, you'll see that it has English and Spanish. And as soon as you type in something in English, you know how it gives you suggestions. And by doing this, you know whenever you type in something in English, it'll give you like suggestions on top. But now when you type in things in Spanish, it'll automatically adapt to Spanish. So it'll give you Spanish suggestions. So that's pretty cool. You can fit two languages in the keyboard now. And then this little cursor that's blinking, if you don't want it to blink, there's a setting for that now as well. You can locate this in the settings and just go into accessibility. Just look for motion. And where it says prefer non-blinking cursor, enable that. And now if we go back, it's a solid block. It's no longer blinking. And then if you have an Apple Watch and you want to offload like some maps, just launch the map app on your iPhone. And on the very bottom was your profile picture. Click on it. And then go ahead and click on the offline map section. On here, you can download a new map. Just follow the on-screen instructions and hit save. But once you save quite a few, where it says automatic update, I like to have that enabled, but where it says sync with Apple Watch, enable it. So now next time when your Apple Watch is in the charging dock, it will automatically synchronize the offload map and put it on your Apple Watch. And if you like to save routes to be offline as well for your hikes, it's a similar process. Just on this page, just click on library. And then in the route section, this is where you create a custom route. And it's as easy as literally just dropping a pin once you find the route, like that, and then where you want to end it, like that. And you'll see the options to reverse it, out and back, or create a closed loop. And then just tap save, name it whatever you like to name it, tap save again, let it save. Right now it's pending. And now you're all set. And so long as you have offload maps enabled, it will automatically synchronize it to your Apple Watch as well. And on your Apple Watch, you'll be able to just go into the map and just click on the magnify glass, tap the more, and you'll see your route right there. And then these next ones are a couple added bonus, but just in case you don't know, now whenever you send a message, when you tap the plus icon, we now have a new send later option where you could type in the message and then set the schedule where, when you want it to be sent automatically. And the cool thing about this automatic send, if you found it to be really low, you can always click and drag it to the very top if it's a feature you are constantly using. Another cool thing can be located in photos. If you recently recorded a video, click on the edit. On the top here, you do have the ability to adjust the FPS rate right here. And you can also customize it. So the FPS rate is only adjusted at a certain section. So if you want the video to play normal speed and then slow down, you can now do that. And then if you have an iPhone with the action button, the iPhone 15s, pros, or newer, in the settings, the action button, you now have the freedom to not only use Shazam, but you can now do control center controls. So if you find yourself using the calculator a lot as an example, or switch from dark mode, light mode, you now have that ability right there, or even launch third-party apps without having to set anything up like in the shortcut apps like we had to do from scratch. Then in case you're not familiar with the new music app, whenever you play music and you tap here, this will automatically toggle the haptic music feedback. And if it's not working for you, just launch Control Center, add control, and just type in music. And you'll see it in the hearing and accessibility. Just add it and then enable it from here without having to go into settings to manually enable it. But you'll be able to feel the music. It's really interesting. It's really trippy. Just keep in mind, by having this enabled, this will drain your battery life a little bit faster. And there you guys have it. That is everything you need to enable to give yourself the maximum privacy as possible when using your iPhone on iOS 18. Thank you so much for watching.